Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and today we really need to talk about something that really burns me inside, okay? Now, I don't really enjoy when a game fails, just because I think the more awesome games there are, the better that it is. But I think today we can pretty much say that Payday 3 is about as dead as it can be. Now, these are the uh, Steam charts for Payday 2. Now, you'll be like, whoa, 27,971 people still play this game that's this vintage? Yeah. They do. It's a fun game. I enjoy it. Throughout all the controversies Payday 2 has had, it is without a doubt so much content that even if you put thousands of hours into the game, you still won't experience everything. It is the one game that I love playing with my buddy Amaru a lot, Kyle. You know why? Because I love heist games. You know, most people are like, I love Helldivers too. I love zombie games. I love games where I could rob banks liquor stores, everything under the sun. If you haven't nailed it down, I'm gonna put it in the duffel bag, I'm gonna run away, all right? I'm gonna steal, I'm gonna be a gangster. And that's probably one of the reasons why I play games like Grand Theft Auto Online. To this day, I just love the idea of being a criminal in a world where I don't suffer any consequences, okay? In the real world, I ain't crypto scamming you, okay? The most you can accuse me of, all right? is promoting an amazing brand that I made with my friends called One Up. It's absolutely one of the best brands. You like skincare? I love skincare, all right? That's why I made a brand. You done dealing with hardcore Scantron tests? Oh, me too. 50 products? No, you just buy one, one pump a day, you're good. But ladies and gentlemen, aside from being one pump chumps, one thing to understand is I don't sell you no crypto. I don't sell you no crazy wild pump and dump scheme, right? I leave all my criminality to video games. And that's where it should be. So Payday is one of those rare games where you can be a criminal. You can be a heister, a cooperative heister. There's not many games like this on the market. You know, if I really think at the top of my head, the only other game that comes to my mind is a stupid shitty uh, crime, uh, what is it, Rocket Crime Boss, Rocky City, that pile of dung, that's the only other thing. Now, obviously, Payday 2 is at a sequel called Payday 3. And if you remember me making a video on it a while back, it's literally me trying to connect to its shitty launch day, okay? The game launched, and it launched to a fanfare of 69,000 people, all-time peak, okay? That's a perfect number. Just a few hundred shy. And of course, right now, <laughs> the most, <laughs> the sequel is at 310 players as of an hour ago. That is actually the average amount of players you can expect. I mean, you're looking at peaks of 415 people, but generally there are times where this game goes down to absolutely <clears throat> zero players on Steam. Now, to understand, this game is also played on PlayStation, Xbox, uh, Game Pass, whatever. So maybe the number's a little higher, but that's generally what you're looking at. PC is the most popular platform for this game, and if that's the numbers, whoo, it's dead all over the board. Now, why is this game dead? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it chased the live service heroin dragon that is basically plaguing a whole chunk of the games industry. Now, at the beginning of this, I mentioned Helldivers 2, and while that game is a live service, the actual development team has been so transparent that it's actually fun for the community to see the game evolve, progress, and develop as it's been released. It also released with a good amount of fucking content! You know what Payday 3 didn't release with? A good amount of content. Now, obviously, comparing this to the release of Payday 2, a game that has had a decade of support, upgrades, quality of life fixes, actual expansions, it's unfair. But when you're making a sequel to a game that already has so much, you better be sure not to alienate the current player base, which is exactly what they did. Now, I feel like the only person at this point that's fucking having any form of fun is the Payday 3 uh, development team, the Payday 3, sorry, the, uh, the Payday 3 social media manager. I mean, that's the kind of comedy we're looking at, boys. Woo, Easter Island face statue, awesome. And of course, all they can really do is basically make time go by, uh, make a little profile resume for themselves so they work at another company somewhere down the road. Because it ain't looking good for a company like Starbreeze. I mean, when you've got boards like this, 17 hours ago, somebody posted, at this point, it's just depressive. The game series has meant so much to all of us that we're willing to still fight for it. But let's be realistic, it's over. They will most likely never recover from this. Not even the game. It'll probably be forgotten as much as I'd like to think. Otherwise, Starbreeze should have just sold the IP to another company or even 10 chambers themselves. Anyone but fucking Starbreeze. But also packed up. As a company, they don't work. They never will be. Part of this rant was also meant for me to say it's depressing how everything is right now. 
and that at least me, I'm going to be leaving the community. So yeah, we're already putting in the departure right here. And honestly, it's Starbreeze, if anything, to just blame in this situation. Now don't worry, like many companies, they've obviously apologized, but it's a situation of, let me explain how bad Payday 3 is. So Payday 3 is a game that has far less quality of life features. I mean, we're at a point where we're hyping up things like a unready button into the game, okay? That's the bad state. We'll get to it in a second. It's a game where you have a selection of maps, and since it's release date, you're looking at one DLC map and two legacy maps, okay? You can understand what legacy, from the old game, okay? And of course, the actual game's character building, the actual amount of builds that you can make are far inferior to anything you can get in Payday 2, understandably. The weapon unlocking is about as great as 5% of the original game. If anything, all you're really meant to do is basically grind this game, get C, cord C quarters weekly, shit, shit that Chris Chan would sell in Quickville. All right, amass a few uh, legendary weapons, and that's pretty much the general gist of the game. The progression is all centered around completing challenges instead of actually playing the game. In fact, one of the biggest problems with the actual progression was going through meaningless checklists in order to actually meaningfully advance your character, which is not something you want to be doing in a video game. I want to play your game, okay, the way I want to play, right? I don't want to play the game in the weird tunnels that you want to keep pushing me into just for engagement, just for live service numbers. That's not how it works. So obviously the game also had some pretty severe issues in regards to servers. We've talked about it, but the gameplay itself honestly doesn't even feel much like Payday, all right? Payday is a game that is all centered around obviously building towards either stealth or loud. And depending on which avenue you go, you do open up far different paths of gameplay, right? Like if you're playing loud and you develop a character like the stoic build, for instance, you could pretty much tank anything the game tosses at you versus a character that is more inclined to be stealthy, meaning they can literally run across the map, even in front of direct sight lines and still never get caught. There are multiple different ways to play this game and all of them are incredibly meaningful and very rewarding. The progression system in the old Payday games absolutely allowed you to progress your character and play exactly the way that you wanted. Something that I feel Payday 3 fairly lacks. Even the maps and the mutations they have do not exactly hit the same levels that Payday 2 does. Now I wanted to show you <coughs> something really fucking cringe in this situation. So because Payday 3 has done such a poor job, their third blog update is about Operation Medic Bag. Now, if you ever played Rainbow Six Siege, one of the things we had on there was Operation Health, where Ubisoft, like many companies, also realized that even with Siege during its like tumultuous launch, and I would know, I've played the game since its launch, there were issues that had to be ironed out. Obviously, Rainbow Six Siege is a well-beloved live service shooter right now. Why? That's because the team consistently provides engaging content on a seasonal base, something Payday 3 has failed to do. Remember, in six months, we've barely gotten slightly functioning servers, one new map, and two legacy maps, okay? It's actually a downright embarrassment. So of course, this is the funniest thing. This is their initial focus, just read this. It's even worse than when I looked at Halo Infinite, which is a great game now, by the way, check it out. They're launching Quick Play version one, okay? Now the unready button, <laughs> The fact that you have to put that in a list, you couldn't even unready in the game at launch. You, once you hit ready, you were fucking full dick committed to go into the heist. How this feature set was basically ignored when the original game had it, I believe since launch, is baffling. The play again feature, vote kicking. Yeah, 2024, multiplayer game, and we're still hyping up vote kick. Loadout renaming. <laughs> Something that's been in gaming since COD 4! <laughs> Controller improvements, recurring smaller content drops, rotating security modifiers, daily activities with rewards. Yeah, because that's, that's what I look forward to. Hey man, I'm home. Let's do some dailies, boys. Let's get those weeklies out of the way. Hey, we got monthlies? Better keep grinding them, boys. Don't want to play any other game. Mask vendor with weekly rotating inventory. Merge players into party post-match. Communication wheel improvements? Yeah, if that's what you're hyping up in the game, you might as well consider it dead as fuck. So of course, going in forward, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to read some of the original posts here. And of course, in 2024, these are the improvements in the game, okay? And let me know if you find anything odd about this list. 
So for one, progression, all right? Like I explained earlier, this game forces you into tunnel vision. So the fact that they're hyping up progression shows you where we're sitting at. New content. Why that has to be even be mentioned, you would think a live service game would just consistently give you new content. Uh, they've also got UI revamp, which again, the UI wasn't necessarily even the worst part, but it doesn't stop there. Stability, matchmaking, and server browser. Very basic features, very basic features. Yet that's what they're highlighting. And of course, last but not least, they're finally introducing an offline mode. Now again, an offline mode is something that should have been bundled with the game to begin with. It's something that happened, it's a complaint that I made when the game initially wasn't working, all right? Why they didn't bother to do this, wait six months later, is baffling. Again, the entire concept of this game is amazing. I love heist video games, I really do. But Starbreeze has to have been one of the worst companies to launch this title. You know, this is one of those games where I wish I could show you gameplay and like constantly be kind of hyping it up and glazing it as I make my videos through the days. But this game was just not in a functional state enough to show at all. It's not a game that I was even proud to be considered a fan of. And as close as I am with some of the people in this community, as much fun as I have with the Payday people, there is no other community that has had one of the worst launches that has yet to be fixed. This video was an anger, was a rant brewing for a long time, okay? I really genuinely expected when I saw the big medic bag dropped that maybe Starbreeze would take it seriously, but it's been six months nearly with almost no tangible update to the game. And that is why we're sitting at 300 players. You know, I shot on Suicide Squad, I really did. I really crapped on that game. But I would be willing to say that the Kill the Justice League game is far better in terms of value than the Payday 3 title. And I'm not even joking when I say that. Even if, even if Suicide Squad crashes every time I play and the game kicks me out, it's still a better deal than Payday 3 in its current state. And I'm not joking when I say that, all right? But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's the current world that we're sitting in. You know, honestly, people will say, just play GTA, just play Helldivers. This is like the only heist game. This is like literally the only game in the genre that's trying to make waves. If another developer came out, made a four player cooperative heist shooter, this franchise would be dead immediately. If you made a serious spiritual successor to Payday 2 that wasn't made by Starbreeze. Absolute embarrassment. But ladies and gentlemen, Aside from refunding the player base, I don't think there's anything that can go on, man. This is just embarrassing. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.